Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Saladiki in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, here today to talk about cervical disc replacement as a great treatment option when you've got bad discs in your neck and you're, and you're talking surgery. So the discs are sort of like shock absorbers in the neck. They're in between the vertebrae. They're, the vertebrae are stacked one on top of another, uh, like bricks, and the discs are in between. And what they allow for is for movement in the neck. Um, this is a neck model, kind of rudimentary, but it allows things to move. So um, disc replacement is just what it sounds like. We take out the diseased disc, get the pressure off the nerves, and then replace it with a prosthesis that still allows that motion. So this is a common problem that I see in my practice. A lot of patients uh, will experience some level of neck pain at some point in their life, but there are times when it gets bad enough that uh, there's pressure on the nerves, which can also cause arm pain. And we call this cervical radiculopathy. So uh, usually when patients come to us, they've had some duration of pain in their neck, which goes down one arm or both in a certain distribution, depending on where in the neck the problem is. When it comes time for surgery, a lot of times the best solution is to take out the diseased disc and get the pressure off the nerves. Um, once that's done, the problem then is that there's empty spaces between the vertebrae that if left alone, those vertebrae will collapse together and cause problems. So the way we've solved that historically is to do a fusion where we put a block of bone in between the uh, vertebrae where the disc was, put a plate and screws to fuse the vertebrae together. That works well, but the problem is it takes a what was supposed to be a mobile segment and makes it stiff. So now you have a stiffer segment, which puts forces on this segment above and below the disc, and that can lead to the need for more surgery down the road. So many people know somebody or, or have heard that a fusion operation in the neck will cause another fusion to be necessary down the road. So what I do rather than fuse is do these artificial disc replacements where basically we reconstruct the disc with a mobile device that once it's in place, it allows for the neck to still move. Now this is a single level here, um, but the real benefits of this are we can get good pressure off the nerves um, and restore mobile function to the neck instead of fusing it. And there's been a wide range of studies done on this topic, uh, comparing fusion with disc replacement. And time and again, the studies show repeatedly that uh, the disc replacement is either better than fusion or at least equivalent to fusion. The thing that's most exciting for patients when I tell them about this, most people are surprised to learn that after surgery, you're not going to wear a neck brace, we're not going to restrict your neck motion. Basically, you're back to normal activity almost right away. Full range motion of your neck, light, low impact exercise can be done right away. We restrict patients or ask them not to really whip their head around, so I always jokingly say no bull riding or bungee jumping for six weeks. Um, but I have patients return to biking and skiing and running within a couple of weeks after this surgery uh, without difficulty. So if you're going to have a disc replacement done in your neck, what you can expect at the day of surgery, of course, is when you get checked into the surgery center, nurses place IVs, you go through medication lists and all that. Uh, we do the operation under general anesthesia, so the patient is placed completely asleep for the procedure. Um, an incision is made in the front of the neck, so we make a small horizontal incision um, at the level that we need to work at um, to, to work our way down and, and take the bad discs out. Now the benefit of that is there's, it's really a minimally invasive type surgery because there's not muscle that gets disrupted or, or structures that really get disrupted during that. It's a very gentle approach. Um, that doesn't cause a lot of soft tissue damage. So that's a nice part of the surgery and can, can aid in the recovery. Um, after the surgery is done, I typically will have patients stay at the facility for about three hours just to make sure they wake up well from anesthesia, they don't have any breathing problems or anything like that. Uh, most people will go home the same day with a bandage on their neck that they remove the next day or they can come by the office and have it removed. Um, we have a lot of folks that are from out of town and they, they'll stay locally in the hotel and come by the office to have their bandages changed the next day. Day of surgery, most patients would, would recount uh, their experience as, as surprisingly easy um, and not as bad as they might have thought it would be to have their neck operated on. Um, that's generally what I hear. Not everybody has as e is an easy an experience, but, um, but as far as surgery goes, typically it's pretty well tolerated. After the initial healing phase from surgery, I typically would keep patients somewhat restricted for about a week or two, um, just to avoid really aggravating their neck. So for 
Uh, anybody that's in more physically demanding work, on average, I would say about two weeks off before you get back to work. Uh, that being said, I do have patients that uh, prefer to go back more quickly and I'm okay with that. I really don't put a restriction on that. Disc replacements are, are a mainstay of my practice. I do a lot of these surgeries. Um, in fact, um, we here at Steamboat Orthopedics are uh, one of the leaders in the country for, in terms of volume for cervical disc replacements. Um, in 2023, I think we were top five in the nation for the number that we do. Um, mostly that is born out of the fact that I'm a true believer in the technology and I think it is truly superior to fusion and I will offer it almost exclusively uh, when I think it, it's it's available and um, so that's that's something I'm very comfortable with I do a lot of uh, which I think is important for patients to think about um, when you look at some of the studies with disc replacement versus fusion or if you have surgeons that are citing those one of the things that uh, may not be as well captured in the in the studies is, is the experience level of the surgeon doing the operation so if you have some uh, somebody or a surgeon who sort of dabbles in disc replacement, does them occasionally, um, you may not find as good of a result as a surgeon that does them all the time. So um, whether it's with me or anybody, I would recommend that you talk to your surgeon about disc replacement, ask about how frequently they do that operation and, and how comfortable they are with it. Um, because like anything, uh, the more experienced your surgeon has with that procedure, the better the outcomes will be.